क्लाइमेट चेंज एज वी से दिस वे क्लाइमेट चेंज विथ थिंक अबाउट सो मैनी थिंग विच इज हैपनिंग अराउंड अस मे बी समाइम इट इज टू हॉट समाइम इट इज टू कोल्ड समाइम इट इज रेनिंग अ लॉट ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ फेब ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर आई एसो डिसाइडेड टू एड क्लाइमेट चेंज इन क्लॉज नंबर फोर पॉइंट वन एंड फोर पॉइंट टू बाय द एंड दिस वीडियो लाइन यू विल अंडरस्टैंड वॉट एग्जैक्टली आर द रिक्वायरमेंट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दीज टू क्लॉजेस वाई दीज टू क्लॉजेज आर इंपॉर्टेंट एंड रेलिवेंट फॉर एनी ऑर्गनाइजेशन एंड वॉट ऑर्गनाइजेशन कैन डू टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड इम्प्लीमेंट इन देयर ऑर्गनाइजेशन एज डिटेल्ड एज मच एज पॉसिबल As you look around, we see that the weather is changing very fast. Like in India, in north part of India, these in this summer the temperature touched 50 degrees. I'm sure you must have recollected that couple of months back in Dubai there was so much rain that everything stopped for two to three days. And similarly, there are so many stories which are there globally everywhere, and it's all happening because of the climate change. When we talk about SDG goals, Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17 goals. Out of that, SDG number 13 is with respect to the climate change. And out of all the 17 goals, even though all are important, SDG 13 is the most important, and everyone is talking about that. That's why on 23rd of Feb, I also decided in, that there should be some identification, or maybe some identification with respect to this. Two clauses, 4.1 and 4.2, with respect to the climate change. Now, when these details were released, it was not only impacting only ISO 9001, but there are close to 30 different standards in the ISO series which are getting impacted. One important thing to understand here is that ISO has decided that there will not be any amendment or there will not be any new standard. Organization needs to understand and they need to implement that. Another important thing which they have said is that it is not mandatory for any organization to identify climate change as one of the issue. If it is applicable, only then that needs to be done. Otherwise, there is no need to do that. Now that brings another important question: that why climate change has become so important, and why ISO decided that it should be a part of their standards. So there are many reasons with respect to that. The first and the foremost is regulatory compliance. now these days the regulatory compliance has become the most important thing and in case organizations are not implementing it it is creating a lot of challenges and problem for them then it has become a case of reputation and image building also if an organization is doing something wonderful with respect to the environment then people are preferring to go to that particular organization and they want to buy the product of that organization then thirdly it is also related to the financial risk and opportunity in case it is being observed that an organization is not following certain thing with respect to the environment there can be heavy penalties and there are different laws by different countries but also there is an opportunity if an organization implements certain thing with respect to the climate change and save something then they can get a lot of money or certain profits or benefits from their stakeholders and apart from that it is also important to understand with respect to the supply chain resilience because organization is not doing everything on their own there are so many people who are around them who are impacting the climate in different ways so that also gets an opportunity to understand that what is the supply chain doing with respect to the climate change then apart from that when we are being forced to do something with respect to the climate change then it also leads to innovation and adaptation of some new things and other things and then apart from that it leads to employee engagement also because people feel that yes they are a part of the entire organization with respect to a bigger goal of doing something for the universe now that brings another important aspect how to implement all those requirement as i said earlier it is not mandatory if it is applicable only then organization has to identify So 4.1 is which is talking about context of the organization. It is talking about internal and external issues. So there could be a policy possibility that climate change may be impacting in some way or other. Say for example, it can be an electronic industry, it can be a rubber industry, it can be a chemical industry, it could be a electro plating powder coating industry, and you can think about majority of organizations are in some way or other impacting the climate change. then the second one is clause number 4.2 which is talking about needs and expectation of the interested parties now no organization is working in isolation each organization is surrounded by so many stakeholders which are directly or indirectly impacted or impacting the organization 
So that again is an area where organization has to see. Now, wherever the electronic items are coming from other parties, in case some rubber components are coming, if some chemicals are coming, maybe different chemicals are coming, different kind of other aspects are coming. So all those things can impact the climate change. So that is why it is important to identify all those interested parties. Now, one important thing is that in case the organization identifies that yes, climate change is applicable only then if you see from the perspective of third party or maybe a certification body they can check what the organization is doing with respect to that but in case organization has not identified it because they think it is not applicable then certification body is not going to force them to identify them it is entirely up to the organization to decide that whether it is applicable and they can justify whether it is applicable or not now, but if it is applicable, there are so many clauses which are getting impacted. So it is the responsibility of both the organization as well as the certification body to see the different clauses which are getting impacted with respect to the climate change. So let me share some examples with respect to that. Let me start first with clause number 4.3, which is talking about the scope part. Maybe the climate change may result in some changes in the scope or application of some requirement or the then the logical output of clause number 4.1 and 4.2 is clause number 6.1 which is talking about risk and opportunities what are the possible risks what are the opportunities which are there with respect to the climate change which can be applicable to the organization that needs to be seen then clause number 6.3 is talking about the changes that because of the scope change or the risk opportunities any change is coming in the management system and its processes that can be seen then clause number 7.1 is talking about the resources in case climate change is relevant then how it is going to impact the resources to deliver the product and services then if we come to clause number 8.2 which is with respect to the contract review process then at the time of selecting the customer or maybe the new products or services at that time we need to understand that how it is going to impact the climate and whether we have got sufficient resources to take care with respect to that or not. Then logically clause number 8.3 is with respect to design and development. What kind of verification, what kind of validation we need to do with respect to the design changes which can be driven by the climate change that can be another clause. Then clause number 8.4 is with respect to the purchasing that with respect to our stakeholders what action we need to take, what needs to be identified so that we can take care with respect to that. And then clause number 8.5 can also be getting impacted that whether all these issues about the climate change is going to impact with respect to any process control that can be seen. And then finally clause number 9 which is talking about performance valuation that with all the things that we are getting implemented with respect to the climate change how we can evaluate that whether we are doing it effectively or not what are the gaps and what can be done with respect to that. So if I do a summary, there are two clauses 4.1 and 4.2. 4.1 is talking about the internal and ex external issues with respect to the organizations and 4.2 is talking about needs and expectation of the interested parties. If it is applicable, only then organization has to implement. If it is not applicable, there is no need, there is no foundation to do that. ISO has decided not to have a separate standard which is amendment which is going to be there. It has to be done the way it is being done and there is no deadline to implement it is in, it is to be implemented immediately well my next video will again be in the same series and there i'm going to talk about life cycle assessment regularly i'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they're helping you to understand your expectations so please do continue that in case you want to understand a little bit more about this particular video you will find a link below if you click that you will find a blog there there you find this information in much more detail and in case you are liking these kind of blogs and videos, you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimangla.com. Thank you.